The INFJ philosopher type dominated by introverted intuition, the whimsical and eccentric function that makes them question reality, is known for one major deception, one lie. Today we're talking about the number one biggest lie that INFJs tell themselves, and it's the lie about the real world. The INFJ is a natural role model issuing high moral conduct, integrity and honesty, and the INFJ is known to be a type that can reveal great truths and deep insights about the real world. To the INFJ personal type, reality is just an illusion. The famous INFJ philosopher Plato said that reality is a mere shadow cast on the wall. And the INFJ sees the truth, the world, that is beyond that shadow. To the INFJ, abstraction and the world of the imagination has the power to unveil the true shape of the world. And this imagination helps them convey and conceptualize a vision or an idea of how things are meant to be or how things really are. So the INFJ seeks honesty, form, shape, purpose and intention behind everything. They believe there is always a deeper secret behind everything. And to the INFJ, the world is more beautiful, real and vivid than anything what the physical world can ever show. Because you're an INFJ, you can struggle with the feeling that other people are only engaged in mere small talk. People to the INFJ can appear boring, shallow and superficial and vain. As an INFJ, I always felt like I wanted to help people wake up from what I saw as the autopilot. I saw people that were just living their same day over and over again, stuck in a script, unable to think for themselves, and unable to see the greater truth of the world and how things really were, how beautiful things really were, what really what made the world so fascinating. So I felt that people were often trapped in a program, a sort of matrix, a fabricated reality, and that they were constantly getting bothered, annoyed by falsehoods, small things, things that don't matter, living false lives, lacking in consciousness of reality in the real world. Now that brings us to the lie that INFJs tell themselves. And that is that the real world is not beautiful, rich or meaningful. The lie is that the real world is just a shadow cast on the wall and that intuition, the power of the mind, is the only real thing. And so the mental, the intuitive, the imaginative is real while the real world is fake. And I know this is a hard truth to face as an INFJ. And let me preface this discussion by talking about what is known as samsara. Samsara teaches that life is cyclical, like a turning wheel, and that we are doomed to relive the same life over and over again in different forms and shapes, unless we're able to learn from life and to rise above what is being shown to us. I think in many ways the INFJ believes that the real world, relationships, getting a job, and the normal day-to-day -day practical reality is samsara, while the real world, well, the imagination, that's the trap, that's the secret way out of the samsara. So the INFJ believes they can think their way out of their reality, the cyclical nature of life. They believe that intuition provides the escape route, the shortcut you can take to just avoid and not have to deal with any of that. But here is where I think the INFJ is really fooling themselves. Because samsara is just as much the mind as it is reality. You cannot escape the cyclical nature of things by just hiding in the safe confines of your mind. Just because your imagination presents a comfortable alternative does not mean that it's not samsara, that it's not the same reality, that it's not all connected, because all things are connected. So when INFJs curse small talk and conversations as vain or shallow or superficial, they blind themselves to the fact that everything has significance. Every word, every action, every event matters and has a deeper meaning. Everything we do and talk about conveys a deeper truth. There is nothing superficial or shallow because everything underneath it shows layers. There is layers, deeper truth to everything. And that's why no conversation is truly boring. 
every conversation reveals something and conversations will only feel boring and repetitive when you're not listening and when you're not able to see the layers and the multifacetedness of these things. I believe this lie that the real world is the false world is what makes the INFJ struggle with isolation and feelings of loneliness and depression because the INFJ feels that the real world is never good enough or never as good as the world of their imagination. Every conversation, every relationship is kind of unenjoyable. Everything becomes hard to enjoy. Everything becomes difficult to endure. Everything becomes a trial to get through until you're able to be alone again and to get back to your own comfort zone. The truth is, if you know that everything has a purpose and reason, nothing will ever bore you again. While INFJs might experience a tug, a difficulty when entering the real world and a resistance, a hesitance because of their introverted intuition, the INFJ has so much to learn from the extroverted and sensory. And while INFJs might feel that they are losing themselves in the real world, that they risk losing their identity and their truth and their honesty in what really matters, the INFJ also has a chance to transcend their own consciousness and their own ego by learning to form a deeper connection to the real world. Instead of thinking that you're meant to climb a tower away from all the things that are sensory, up to the top that is enlightenment, see sensory and see the intuitive as part of a wheel. See that they are connected, see that they spin on the same chain, see that they are all part of one another and feed into one another. Recognize that everything that is sensory gives birth to and helps you form a deeper connection to yourself and see that everything serves a purpose. In Christian myths, there is something known as the Tower of Babel. And it's said that once humans tried to get to the heaven, they tried to build a tower that would reach all the way to the heaven. And in many ways, that's what intuition does. Intuitive dominance, they believe that they can somehow climb this tower that will take them all the way to heaven. They believe that they can somehow uh, find a way to escape earth, escape the material and somehow become one with the gods through the pursuit of intuition. But let me tell you something. The thing is, nothing can grow to heaven that which does not have strong roots. Recognize that if you want to reach high and if you want to reach a higher level of awakening and enlightenment, you also have to have deep roots to the world. Only by forming attachments and connections and only by grounding yourself in material and forming a connection to nature, people, relationships and the life around you can you grow mentally the fortitude that allows you to reach your highest level of insight. So somehow you're going to need to learn to integrate and connect these two functions with one another. And if you can do that... You're going to be allowed to reach a higher level of existence, a higher level, a bit of a closer relationship to the divine. INFJs sometimes deceive themselves in assuming that intuition is the only path to heaven or to insight or to wisdom, and that sensors are stupid, fickle or naive, clinging to the ground when heaven is the way. But they miss that because sensors nurture and cherish the ground, cherish nature, and cherish their connection to the physical, they also build a greater strength, a greater resilience that also allows them to think about and form deeper understanding and wisdom about life. So to wrap this all up, I want to go back to the metaphor of samsara. We deceive ourselves if we think that we can escape from samsara. We can't run from life and from the world. We can only learn from it. Every action, person or situation presents you with an opportunity to grow yourself and everyone else around you. Do you think that you'll find enlightenment in the future or through physical exercise? Do you think that you'll find enlightenment by isolating yourself from other people or from forming deep and close relationships of honesty, wisdom and insight, shared honesty, shared space of understanding? While you can certainly receive insight by taking time for yourself or by being alone and while you certainly should allow yourself to enjoy alone time 
and space and time to be by yourself, you certainly can also find enlightenment in enjoying physical exercise or in sitting on the beach with a good friend. Consciousness can only be found in imagination. Sensation can be both blind but also intentional. And so can intuition. Intuition can be both false and true. These functions are neither good or bad. Intuition is not good and sensory is not evil. They all need and depend on one another. So, if you want to grow your imagination and intuition to the next level, the next plane of existence or understanding, you might want to take a minute to also grow your sensory, grow your presence, your physical shape and form, grow a deeper and more personal relationship to your body, grow stronger attachments and bonds to the people around you, and form and have real experiences that you can think about and process and understand to form deeper and higher levels of insight. The real world is not pretentious. Conversations are never small talk. Friendships are not vain. And real life is not a prison. The real life, the real world, is exactly what you think it is. Whatever you want it to be. And it will serve that role to you that you want it to serve to you. You can choose to see it as small talk. Or you can choose to see everything people say as significant and revealing. You can choose to see it as vain, or you can choose to see the deeper beauty. So INFJs, do you agree or disagree with this message? And how do you relate to and connect with the sensory and the physical? And how do you balance out the intuitive and the imaginative with the sensory and the material? Thank you so much for watching. And don't forget to check out these two videos where I talk more about misunderstandings about sensing and about INFJ personality type. Thank you so much for watching.